All righty, welcome back to church on this Sunday evening. Come on in, find your place. Join me by way of standing and grab your songbook, and let's turn to song number 250, 250. We're going to sing the great hymn, He Keeps Me Singing. Hope you've got a song in your spirit tonight. We're going to sing, He Keeps Me Singing, 250. Sing it with me on the first verse. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. He fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. 250 on the second. All oh, my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. It's Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every Feasting on the riches of his grace, resting neath the sheltering wing, and always looking on his smiling face. That is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every He's coming back. Sing about it now. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. He fills my What a day it has been already. I tell you, God is working around this place. This morning we had a young lady saved, amen, right down here. And we had another young lady got baptized after that. And then uh, it was wonderful. We went from there to the widow's banquet and uh, wid widows, widowers, and uh, had a great time with them. Played a few games, ate real good food, didn't we, Brother Marion? And real, real good food. And got it catered in from Mission Barbecue. I tell you, I liked it. It was good. And uh, I was talking about pulled pork this morning. I had some this afternoon. I loved it. It was good. And then um, all the fixings that go with it. Praise God. And we had a good time with them. And uh, it, that's, that's real special because it's a banquet type. We get to sit around the table with folks that just get, get they have uh, the deacon's ear, if you will. And, and it's a great time. To just fellowship and communicate a little bit. It's a real sweet time. Well, then I got a phone call that um, my dad uh, was eating lunch with church visitors. Is that right? You were eating with them, and uh, and they wanted to get saved. And uh, and so, wouldn't you know? About three thirty, four o'clock in this afternoon, we had two adult visitors, first time here this morning, got saved and came back to church in the rain and all. Amen. And they said, "We need to get saved." And uh, praise the Lord, it got saved. And then, uh, and then Larry Harrison showed up. Brother Larry Harrison, he's our, our book guy, amen. How many times have you been to the church here? About five. Five times, okay. And this is the first time I've met him here. I knew him a lot from Michigan. And uh, we used to tease because the pastor where I came from is Harrison. So they were, that was Cousin Harrison up there, and uh, I knew him well. He's got a lot of great books, and I haven't even looked at what he's got. But you probably have some Bibles, and you have Bible commentaries, and you, what do you got? And we also have uh, these little pages of devotionals. You got devotionals too, okay. Praise the Lord, amen, kids stuff, and uh, would you just take a moment 
Go look at his table after service. <laughs> Go look at his table after service. And uh, he's made a life purpose now in the later part of his life to get books and material into hands of Christians. And it's been a blessing. I bought several things from him over the years, and uh, it's been a blessing to me. And so after the service, would you avail yourself to that? That would be wonderful. Praise God. Amen. He's doing some great things. And uh, hallelujah. It's just great. Let's ask uh, God to be glorified tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Horton to come and open us in prayer tonight. And let's just thank him for how, how, what he's doing around here. Amen. Amen. Please. Thank you. Let's pray. Dearly Father, Lord, we do thank you so very much for the wonderful services that we had this morning. Uh, Lord, sweet time of fellowship in the Sunday school hour. And then following that, uh, Lord, I know in the morning service that you were moving, Lord, folks getting saved and baptized. Uh, likewise, in our children's churches, Lord, just the Holy Spirit moving. Father, we thank you for that. We pray now and ask you to please be with us this evening. Holy Spirit, we yield to you and we ask you would move in our hearts. I pray that in a short time as we hear from the Word of God, Father, as it's preached to us, that we would respond to it and that we would yield our will to it, to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As you're seated, I wonder, is there any first-time guests with us tonight? Anybody at all? I'm looking around. I, I recognize just about everybody. I'm looking here, and I'm looking and looking. It looks like we're all family tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's look up here in the balcony. Oh, that's Mrs. Trumpy. All right. Hi. Good to see you. How are you? All right. Looking over here. She loves getting called out, doesn't she, Brother Trumpy? Amen. Let's talk about Mrs. Trumpy for a minute. Amen. Now she's rolling, at, rolling her head at me, rolling her eyes. Amen. Love it. Brother Trumpy? Amen. All right, good. Uh, praise the Lord. I believe we're all family tonight. Amen. Anybody I missed? Anybody? Brother Damien, how was service today? Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Gunther, how was service today? Amen. Thumbs up. Love it. Love it. Thank you, for Matthew, for riding the bus. Appreciate you, buddy. And he was riding a bus. We have a, a deaf man named William that comes on the bus. And Matthew's a great help using sign language today on the bus with us. Usually I just like this. <laughs> and sometimes I say good morning, and that's all I got. And every once in a while I say, you're cool. That's it. So Matthew is a great help to us this morning. I appreciate him. And uh, hallelujah. And so let's take our song books again, please. And let's go to 234. I like to pick out unfamiliar songs so we can learn them. And apparently I picked this one out. And Mrs. Williams would have helped me pick it out, I'm sure, at some point. And I looked at Brother uh, Kidwell in the hallway right before we came out. And he says, I don't know that one. And I said, I don't know if I know it either. So we're going to look at it right now. Amen. 234, meet me there. And I think I know it, but I've got to be reminded of the notes here. On the happy golden shore. All right, help me sing it. Amen. Come on, McCoy. I need you, buddy. Je Jesse, come on, let's go. Here we go. 234, please. On the first together. Ready? On the happy golden shore where the faithful bark no more. When the storms of life are over, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away. Pure and perfect day. Okay, that was a disaster. Amen. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. All right. Brother uh, Stanley, would you help us for a minute? Can you play that first verse so I can hear it? Would you do that? There it is. Where the night is also. All right, let's try it. Here we go. Ready? I don't know if you were reading it when I was reading, but try it anyway. Here we go. We got to learn these songs. Here we go. Ready? On the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more. When the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day. I am going home to stay. Meet me there. Meet me there. Faithful part no more. Meet me there. Anybody got it? I got one over here. Amen. Anybody down here? Okay, our instrumentalist got it. All right, amen. 
Let's try that first verse again. Amen. Come on, Mustakas. I need you, buddy. All right, here we go. Ready? On the first. Meet me there, 234. Join us. Ready? On the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, when the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day, I am going home to stay. Meet me there. Meet me there. Meet me there. Where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Doing great. On the second, ready. Here our fondest hopes are vain. Dearest links are rent in twain. But in heaven no from vain there. By the river sparkling bright in the city of delight. Where our faith is lost in sight, meet me there. Meet me there. tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. It's easy to learn a new song and you're looking at the notes and you're trying to figure it out and I'm trying to hear the part and it's easy for me not even to know what I'm singing about. Now, now that we're trying to learn it, look back at what we're singing. Okay, he says here, uh, the songwriter saying, meet me there, meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. Revelation 22 says there's a tree of life on both sides of the river that's going to bloom and give its fruit, and there's 12 fruits, I think, I believe it says in their season, or we get to eat of 12 different fruits I, every month, I believe it says, so maybe there'd be like one every month, and I don't know what those are, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Okay, and then it says, when the storms of life are o'er, on the happy golden shore. Praise God where there's no sorrow, there's no more crying, there's no more pain. Praise the Lord for these things. You with me? All right, where the, verse 3 says, where the harps of angels ring. Let's sing that, please. Ready? Together? Where the harps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king, meet me there. Where in sweet communion blend Heart with heart and men with friend In a world that never shall end Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there Where the tree of life is blooming Meet me there When the storms of life are roar On the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Good singing. I like learning new songs with you. 260 now, please. 260. If I'm not mistaken, we sang this last week. When the Lord saved me. Here's a good song. Amen. 260. Everybody remember this? You don't remember it. Where were you last week? Were you here? Amen. I think I was here. Amen. I better have been here. Amen. We learned this last week. Let's sing it together. When the Lord saved me. Join me, please. 260. Amen. Here we go. On, the, on this course. Ready? When the Lord saved me. When the Lord saved me. Something wonderful happened. When the Lord saved me, old things passed away, darkness turned to day, something wonderful happened when the Lord saved me. Amen. Thank you for singing these songs. And this is a great thing about a songbook. There is so much in there that we forget about. And when we go through here and learn some of these good old songs, they've been around for a long, long time. And some of them, we, we sung so many times, we just know them. But others of them, we don't sing very much and we, don't, we forget them. And so, 
Thank you for learning those and, and singing those. Got to teach them to our children. Got to teach the next generation these songs. Amen. Don't let the testimony of the Christian faith and the music that we carry with us, don't let it die out. That's why God wrote down the book of Psalms. Right? We don't have all the music, okay, but we have the words. And those Psalms were so important to Israel as they came to the temple and rejoiced about what God had done and they sang those songs. You so many times through the scripture where whether it's Exodus with uh, Miriam and the ladies after they got out of the Red Sea and then Moses sang and different songs like that. David sang songs and they're quoting scripture. They're quoting the Psalms before we even get to Psalms. It's because they, they were songs that they were singing and praise the Lord for that. And uh, we forget that sometimes. Music is a big part of church. Yes, it is. That's where our hearts, joyful with what God is doing, and it, we just start pouring out what God's got in here. Please, I, I try to teach the choir this and our, music, our, our instrumentalists. This is not music right here. This is just how we wrote it down. Music happens right here. That's where it is. And you can tell when somebody's singing if they mean it or not. You can tell when somebody's singing if they're saved and they're excited about it. Amen. And I'm telling you what, when revival takes place, that's when we really start to sing out because it's real in the heart. Praise God for that. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Williams to come at this time. We have, of course, our, our Bible uh, project coming up where we're going to start putting together John and Romans again. That's the end of the month. And I'm going to ask him to talk about that just for a short time, please. Thanks. Well, I'm excited to have our good and dear friend, uh, our missionary. You good. Uh, you're good. I'm good. Yes, sir. So, uh, Brother Alan Johnson with us, and for our Africa John and Roman Bible Assembly Project. And uh, we're looking forward to this as we, as we uh, organize uh, scriptures, of course, and, co and, and assemble scriptures uh, to go out to African shores, uh, a needy area of the world that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I would ask, if you would please, and uh, to, first of all, uh, to prayerfully be a part of that day. Uh, we're excited about it, and we're looking forward to that time. You can sign up there on the screen there, uh, on the events page uh, there, at, 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 uh, of course, on our website, or, of course, you can snap that code there, uh, and that'll take you straight to the sign-up form there as well. There's a lot of work to be done. We have 15,000 John and Romans coming, and I am excited to see what the Lord is going to do with that. There's a lot of work that is planned for that day. We'll start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we work on two-hour shifts. Uh, and so you can sign up for all of them if you'd like. Uh, we're looking for about 40 people in each uh, time slot. So at 8, at 8 to 10, 10 to 12, two, uh, 12 to 2, and then 2 to 4. Uh, we have some openings in the morning, not very many, but we have more openings in the afternoon still. And so if you would like to sign up, please do so, and uh, that'd be a great help. Please list how many you are coming uh, with you. Help That'll help us give a right and appropriate number uh, so we can make sure that we have a good flow of work throughout the day. Uh, breakfast and lunch will be provided uh, to the appropriate, of course, time spaces there, and uh, so be aware of that. There'll be refreshments throughout the day, and it's just a wonderful time of fellowship. We had such a great time last year and uh, doing that, and we're looking forward to increasing that uh, and to encourage it even more to be a part of that. And so please, I ask if you would, uh, make sure that you're a part of that day. It's Saturday, the September the 30th, and uh, we're looking forward to a great, great day on that day. And so on Friday, the 29th, we'll remind you when, I, when it gets closer next week, but if we could have a couple of men to help get things set up for that day, that Friday afternoon, Brother Johnson's going to come in, we're going to set up and then prepare it, of course, for that morning. And so if a few men could help or if we can begin thinking about that, and we'll ask for uh, commitments next week on that, that would be a great, great help as well. So don't forget it, September 30th, and uh, we're looking forward to assembling African scriptures, going, of course, to African shores, reaching people for the gospel of Christ. All right, so the scripture gets printed, right? Big stacks of prints, and there's, I think there's two of them in one, the way it gets printed. They're big, big sheets, remember? And uh, remember seeing that picture of Brother Ken, and he's trying to rip them apart. They're perforated, and he's trying to rip them apart. And so 
what happens is they get printed and we can't do the printing. There's a printer that does that. And then there's a lot of manpower that it takes to put together the scriptures. And so we got to separate the scriptures and then we've got to put them with a cover correctly and make sure it's lined up. And then we have a group that's stapling, right, and make sure that the staple gets to the right spot and puts it together and folding that, all that, right? And then there's a big machine that cuts off all the edges and makes it look real good. And so all of that's got to take place and it all takes manpower. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Last year, we put together 10,000 plus. And then you remember Sunday night, we prayed over them and we sent them down to Belize. And then our group got to Belize in January and we got to pass out the very Bibles we put together. It was awesome. And then we saw fruit that has remained since then because we found out that some people that got those Bibles in, school, in the schools we were at later came to church with John Harrison and, uh, and praise the Lord, I, I think it was Brother Marsh, if I'm not mistaken, was down there and told us, wrote back and told us that he had met somebody that came to church and uh, had gotten a Bible in the school when we were down there. And praise the Lord for that. Amen. So we're not going to Africa. Not, okay, well, I told you I'd like to take a trip every two years. And next year would be the odd year. We just went to Belize at the beginning of this year. And so, but we're going to put together and send them to Africa. And we're going to send more because we can do more. All right? Last year we got done at noon and we said we should have done more. Amen. So we'll do 15,000 this year. And praise the Lord, people need the scripture to read, to get saved, to read, to learn, to grow. John and Romans, learn who Jesus is. Amen. As God, the fact that he can save them. And then Romans is, is how, to be, how to be saved and, and, and all that, right? We learn who Jesus is and then how to receive him. Let's praise the Lord for that. And so let's be a part of this, and I thank you for that. Man, I'm going to ask you to throw up the screen of the deacons again, please. I'm on purpose announcing this every service till we vote because it is time. We've got six deacons currently. We need eight, and we have two open seats. And once again, these two men, Dale Gaylor and Adam Grant, have been prayed over and sought after. Uh, when, I mean, when I say that, I mean the deacons and I met, and we talked about who uh, would line up with the scripture and who God would have be the next deacon. And then names were given and we prayed over them and God led us to these two men right here. Right, that's, that's important that we say that. He led us to these two names. And so we are now bringing it before the church and asking you uh, for, for church your favor on this thing. And it's going to be, again, not popularity. It's going to be yay or nay on each of these men. Okay, meaning there's two seats and two men, and we ask you for uh, you to vote on Sunday night, the 24th, and that'll be after the evening service. And so, if you're not present, I need you please to call in and get cast your vote, please, before that time, and uh, we will take care of that. I'll need a, a couple of my uh, senior deacons to count, uh, and uh, Brother Williams will have that all arranged, and we'll take care of that afterwards, and appreciate that. Remember, next Sunday night when you're coming in the doors, we'll have to tally who's here so we can have accurate numbers of how many church members are here so we know how the vote's going. We need to know the percentage thing and all that. So praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 We got to know that, right? So if it's greater than 50% voted yay, we got to know how many people are here so we know how many, what percentage it is, all right? So uh, you'll need to sign in as you're coming to church, 18 years of age and older for members uh, can vote, and I thank you for that, all right? So it'll be quick, a little handwritten ballot, all right? So thank you for that, please. Don't forget, try to have a pen with you next Sunday night, if you would. That'll be a help to us, okay? And we'll pass out sheets of paper. That'd be a blessing. All right, let's have the men come forward, please, for our, our evening offering. Thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, let's see here. Brother Yurish, would you come, please, tonight? And uh, thank you for uh, being here and for... Asking the Lord's blessing on our offering tonight. Amen. Yours family been in church here a little while. Amen. About ready to marry off his son. Man alive. And uh, praise God for that. Would you ask God's blessing please? Thank you. Let us pray. Father, as we approach our tithes and offerings, uh, help us to have grateful hearts. Thank you, Lord, for the, the privilege of being part of the work that you are doing in this sin-soaked world. 
It helps us to maintain the church that you've given us. And many of these resources go out far beyond uh, the immediate area of the church. There's, there's so many efforts here, so many ministries, and they, we look to you for support in all of those things. And you use these things, and we thank you, Lord, for providing the kind of stewardship that we have to make sure that these resources are used well. So when we approach the plate, Lord, I just pray that we would always have a grateful heart. You give us so much, and you ask us to contribute so little. And, and those who contribute, contribute beyond those love offerings of every sort that go into that plate, and we just pray, Lord, that you'd bless the giver and that you'd multiply, multiply these resources to do a great work and all honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. No, you just keep on going. I'm just, yeah, why not? Let's go. You know when his head's down, he's getting with it, right? I tell you what. Wow. Why doesn't he have a CD yet? I mean, we could have that playing through the hallways all week long, and uh, you could have it in your home, and uh, he could retire. You know, all that stuff, right? Man, praise the Lord. And uh, hallelujah. Get a CD made. Amen. Let's do it. What do you think? Let's take an order. Who votes to have him make a CD? All right, good. We got it. We're boom. It's done. Let's get it done. Brother Jones, would you come, please? Is it going to be a good one this time? A mother-in-law joke. Watch out. <laughs> a mother-in-law wanted to see which one of her son-in-laws respected or cared for her the most. And so she went by the first son-in-law's house, and there was a lake nearby, so she jumped in it, and the first son-in-law jumped in and rescued her. Next day, he found a brand new Toyota Corolla in his driveway, and thank you from your mother-in-law. Goes to the second son-in-law's home the next day, jumps in the lake, and same thing, son-in-law jumps in, saves her. Next day, he gets a brand new Toyota Corolla in the driveway, thanks from your mother-in-law. Goes to the third son-in-law's house, jumps in, and wouldn't you know it, the son-in-law did not save her, let her drown. <laughs> next day, there's a brand new Rolls Royce in his driveway, says... <laughs> Thanks from father-in-law. <laughs> Would you stand with me, please, and shake a hand with your neighbor?
All right, go ahead and make your way back to your seats. Remain standing. Let's turn to song number 257. 257. Farther along, 257. We'll sing the first and last. 257. We'll understand it all by and by. Sing it with me on the first verse. Farther along, ready on the first. Tempted and tried, we're off me to Think about it as we sing it. When we see Jesus coming in glory, when he comes from his home in the sky, then we shall meet him in that bright mansion. Bibles tonight, if you would, and go to the book of Hezekiah, chapter number six. Sorry. Hesitations. There we go. Matthew, Matthew, chapter one. Oh, I'm sorry. Chew. Chapter two. And uh, Matthew, chapter two. I'm sorry. I'm just having a little fun in spite of my faux pas this morning of misreading the verses. Amen. Matthew chapter 2. We'll start in verse number 1. Notice what scripture says. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you once again for your word. Thank you so much for the uh, truly the preservation of your word as we were reminded of even this morning as uh, I taught a starting point. And thank you for truly how you have given us your word over and over again. And God, thank you for that. And God, I ask that you please would use your word tonight in a special way. God, I pray that you would teach us, guide us in truth, please. God, I pray that you would use your word truly to change our hearts. Help our hearts truly to be molded closer to the image of Christ. And God, will give you the glory and praise for it. God, we love you tonight. I pray that once again, you would guide us, please. Holy Spirit of God, we yield our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. darkness Jesus found me, touched my eyes and made me see, broke sin's chains that long had bound me, 
gave me life and liberty. Oh, glorious love of Christ, my Lord divine, that made him stoop to save a soul like mine. Through all my days and then in heaven above, my song will silence never. I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love. Oh, amazing truth to ponder. He whom angel hosts attend, Lord of heaven, God's son, what wonder. He became this sinner's friend. Oh, glorious love of Christ, my Lord divine, that made him stoop to save a soul like mine. Through all my days and then in heaven above, my song will silence never. I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love. My song will silence never. I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love. And praise him for his glorious love. And praise him for his glorious love. Brother Phil, that was for me. I appreciate you. Amen. God uses music to encourage the preacher. Amen. Before he preaches. And so thank you for that. Hey, didn't you notice? He's a man and he's singing. Men can sing too. Amen. God doesn't just use ladies, he uses men. Amen. Yes, sit and your, your head goes this way. Yes. <laughs> amen and amen. I'm looking down here, I see, her, see the Spears family, appreciate them. And uh, they in the middle of the afternoon, you'd think they'd be home taking a nap or eating lunch or something, and they were sitting on the highway on a bus waiting for the, for the accident. And they said, how long did you sit on the highway? An hour. An hour. Wow, thank you for your, uh, just giving your time to the Lord today on the bus route. And there was a lot of people that came to church, and uh, I appreciate you. Amen, amen. But sometimes those things happen. Praise God for 81. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, good. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Thank you, Brother Williams. He got it right. Amen. <laughs> Last, a couple weeks ago, we were in Matthew chapter 1, and we looked at the king. Now, remember, Matthew was a Jew, and he knew that the Jews were waiting for the promised king, the promised Messiah that was supposed to come through Abraham's line and then on down through David, Abraham being the, uh, starting that nation. God told him in, in Genesis chapter 12, I believe, that all the nations of the world would be blessed because of him and his family, his, his line. And then it went through David and God said, David, I'll never allow your lineage to come off the throne. Uh, it'll always be there and that would be through Jesus Christ. And in chapter 1, we saw that lineage and where Matthew is declaring to the Jews, hey, behold your king. This is the promised king. This is the Messiah that you've been waiting for. Remember, many of them rejected Christ because he didn't come as a conquering hero. He came humble like a, as a servant, but he's still the king. And just because... In our pride, or let's say the Jews at the time, wanting somebody to conquer Rome and be that victorious hero and take care of everything, and just because he came a little different, doesn't mean he's not the king. Amen. Now, he will come in his glory one day. Amen. Revelation 19 on the horse. 
Come on. Robed in white. The Word of God printed on him. Amen. And he comes victorious. Whew. What a day. Hey, I'm going I'm to be there. I'm going to watch it. Amen. Now, for, for whatever reason, God allowed the Old Testament Jews, those that were given the Old Testament, to not understand the church age. So when they're talking about the Messiah to come and being a conquering hero, they didn't understand that for a time, God was going to be a servant and humble and die necessarily to, to save the sins of the world, right? They just thought he was going to come, and the, they didn't see the church age in their, in their prophecy. They didn't understand that. They thought he was just going to come and conquer everything, but he didn't at first. But he's going to. He's going to. Now, we get into chapter 2, and we're still, remember, Matthew is painting Jesus as king. Remember we said the four different gospels, they're all a different view. Matthew, Jesus is king. Uh, Mark, Jesus is a servant. Luke, Jesus is the son of man. And then in, in, in John, Jesus is the son of God. They're all different viewpoints that God used four different men to write the scriptures down so that God could teach that Jesus was all these things. And in Matthew, he's the king. Matthew chapter 2, if, if there was a title tonight, I would label this, Matthew 2, Adore the True King. Now, chapter 1 was Behold the King. Chapter 2 is Adore the True King. And I say of that for a few reasons. The adore, when I think of the word adore and just how I've been influenced the word adore, I, I think of, oh, little baby, let's adore him. Oh, he's cute. But that's not the definition of adore. When I looked up the definition, it's to regard with the utmost esteem, love, respect, and honor. And then it continues, to pay divine honor to and to worship. So when, they, when the song says, come, let us adore him, it's not talking about a little infant like, oh, you're so cute. No, it's he is the king. And he is the king we've been waiting for. And he is that king that Daniel said would come. And praise the Lord, they were looking. Remember, the wise men, look at verse, uh, let me read verse 1 again. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Wait a minute, east. What's east of Israel? Uh, okay, so somebody said Asia. Asia is east of Israel. Let's talk about loca locality of what we know of the Old Testament. What is east of Israel when you're thinking about big cities or kingdoms and all that? Babylon's one of them. And then Persian Empire. Persia overtook Babylon, right? Okay. And then later the Greeks overtook them, but they're not east of that. So these wise men are coming from either Babylon or the Persian area. And who was the great influence in the Old Testament, in both those areas, in which under his time frame, he was a counselor to both different kingdoms, and the kings themselves said, Behold, Jehovah is God. Daniel. That's exactly right. The Bible says that Daniel, remember Nebuchadnezzar, the, the proud man? And he was made to go out in the field, and he was lived like an animal. And when he got out of that, he said, Behold, Daniel's God. Jehovah is king. He's God, and we're going to serve him. Later, his grandson would say the same thing. And then King Cyrus said the same thing when he sent everybody back to rebuild the temple. So these wise men are coming from the east, and I believe, my opinion here, the Bible doesn't say this, but my opinion is, is that they were referencing and reading this, the uh, text that Daniel wrote because Daniel's timeline, if you remember, about six, eight months ago, we looked at Daniel's timeline, and it lays it out when the Savior was to come. And so, as I was doing some studying this week, I didn't realize this, but there were several historians around the time of Christ that were writing about how people were looking for some kind of appearance to come out of Israel. Josephus was one of them. He wrote that... Uh, uh, that again, just like in, in the book of Micah, we know he quotes it here. Look at verse, uh, let's, let's just read along here. Look at verse 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, 
and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and this is quoting Micah chapter 5, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That's Micah 5.2 5, that is quoting that and saying that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Now, a lot of people understood these things. The, the writings of the Jews, they had been, the, the scattering of the Jews, these writings had been around, of course, Daniel as well with his time frame. And there were certain, if I can say it this way, a remnant, a small group of people that were looking for the Savior. Now, Herod, he's out to lunch here. He's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what? And a lot of people were that way. However, there were some. Do you remember after Jesus was born, his parents, rightfully, rightfully done by the law, took Jesus to Jerusalem to the temple. Remember that? Eight days after he's born. And the Bible says to fulfill the timing of the law for Mary's sake and he was to be circumcised. Remember that? Do you remember there, was two, there were two older folks in the temple at that time? One of them's name was Simeon and one of them was Anna. And they came in. God told Simeon, he says, you're going to see the king before you die. And he saw the baby Jesus eight days old. And he's, he says, "Woo! now, Lord, let me, let me part in peace because I have seen the Messiah. He was waiting for him. So not everybody was just out to lunch and doing their own thing. Some people were true to the scriptures and waiting for his appearing. Let's make some application here. How many of us are waiting for his appearing yet today? Amen. He's coming again. Amen. Are you ready for that? Now listen, I, as preaching the gospel and sharing that and even teaching uh, end times and things, most people don't live life with the idea that, hey, I could see Jesus any moment. And it doesn't, I mean, I'm talking, we're sometimes, we're in great, we're in great health and we're just not thinking about dying. But you know what? It doesn't matter if we're dying or not. Jesus could come back now. Amen. Amen. So there were some people that were waiting for his appearing and uh, they knew him to be the Messiah. Now, a couple things now. When, um, when we look at this, we see that Jesus is not the only king that's mentioned, is it? There's another king here. Notice verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of who? Herod the king. Now if Jesus is the true king and he's supposed to be in the lineage of David, then Herod is illegitimate. I mean, he's, wrong. he's, not, he's fake, right? He's the false king. Yet he's king. In the people's eyes, around physical land, he's king, but he's the wrong one. You with me now? Herod, who's, who are we talking about here? We're talking about Herod the Great. And Herod the Great came to power not long after the Romans had taken power of Israel. Okay, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Roman, it was uh, not an emperor, excuse me, it was a general of Rome by the name of Pompey overtook Israel in about B.C. 63, if, I, if I've got my dates right. And, it, and so right after that, then you had Pompey and Julius Caesar were kind of competing for a little while, and then Caesar gets his power and takes that thing, and then Caesar's assassinated. Remember that? He's assassinated by Mark Anthony and some of the other senators, about the Rome Senate, right, around that time. And Herod the Great is making his way into power at this time. He's persuading some of Rome. And so Rome's in charge, but they're setting up governors and people in different lands to do their business. And Herod, he's, he's not completely Jewish. He's actually an Edomite. His father was in, from Edom and his mother was a Jew. Therefore, do you know who Edom is? The Bible says it. It says, Edom, who is Esau? Esau was Jacob's brother, 
and the one not with the birthright, the one that's not was not chosen, Israel would come through Jacob. And Esau and his people located to the south, like below the Dead Sea and to the south of Israel, that was Edom. And they would, for the rest of time, after, I mean, Jacob and Esau uh, got uh, reunited there towards the end of Jacob's life, right? And they were cordial towards one another, but their kids would not be. If you read the Old Testament, you look at history, uh, Edom and Israel would be at odds. Okay? Do you remember when Moses was trying to lead the people through Edom? And the king said, absolutely not. You're not coming through my land. Remember that? That's the Old Testament there. They didn't get along. So there was actually times where Edom uh, did not defend Israel and let enemies just come in and do whatever they wanted. And so God was, would judge Edom, and he did. All right, But Herod came out of that. He was not Jewish. He was not of the line of David. He was, he was, he was the wrong king. So how, how is this going on here? We have a king on a throne that is fake. It's the wrong king. Now, I'm going to make some great application, but you can already go in your heart. There's the true king, and there's wrong, there's wrong ones that we look at. There's, God, there's the right God in our life, and then there's wrong things that become gods to us. Yes? Yes, lots. Sometimes that can be money. Sometimes that can be work. Sometimes it can be family. It can even be ministry if we allow it. We, we're doing something, we're working it in the flesh and we're trying to boost this thing up where we let, let's say, let's just use a Sunday school class for a, minute, for a minute. We let our Sunday school class and the name of our class and the building of our class take the preeminence away from Jesus Christ. And it can become a God to us if we're not careful. It is easy in ministry to worship the wrong thing because it's Jesus who we're supposed to worship. Look at that symbol behind me. That's a wonderful symbol. But I have seen so many people worshiping a symbol and an image that they shouldn't be worshiping the image. They should be worshiping the one who was on the cross. Amen. 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 Be careful how much we worship an image. God said, don't make any graven image unto me because he, he knew the Jewish people would have trouble with images. He knew that. And he said, don't make one unto me. That's why when they made the golden calf, that was a picture of God and his strength. But yet they worshiped an image and made the creator come down into an image, and it was wrong. And God said, don't do that. Okay? Now, Herod's on the throne, right? Herod was nasty. He was a, he was a brutal, cruel, uh, awful man. He was all about him and his pride, and he killed anybody that even threatened his, his reign including his family. Herod the Great was not, a, was not a great guy. Let me just say that. Herod the Great was not a great guy. Write that down. Okay. He, he killed people. He literally hacked and hewed his way through life. At one time, he killed one of his wives because she was gaining some popularity among the people. Her name was, I have a hard time saying it, it was Miriam, Miriam Mene. It's, it's like writing the name Miriam with an N-E after it, and I have a hard time saying that. So I'm just going to call her Miriam for a moment, okay? He had this wife, and he loved her, but he got, he got his fe feathers ruffled a little bit because the people were taking a liking to her. And he said, I'm going to get rid of her. And he killed her. He later killed two of his sons. He allowed his sons to be killed, strangled, I believe, in prison, if I'm not mistaken. He, would, uh, uh, he killed his wife's brother also. And uh, I think it was Caesar, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Julius Caesar said, I would rather be one of Herod's swine than one of his sons. Because he had no friends and people hated him because of his brutality and his cruelty. He was the false king. Let me just say this. Gods that are not the true God, they're bold, they're in your face, they are blatant and out there. The devil is using things like money and activities and things in our lives to get us off track. And it's in our face, and he'll dangle it in front of you, and he won't back down. And it's out there. Television. There is so much filth that's being shoved in our homes. I'm not saying the TV is wrong. I'm saying be careful with it. Because there's a lot of junk that's coming in our homes 
And it's the devil's just shoving it right in our homes. The internet's even worse nowadays. We're getting our television through the internet. Be careful with it. Just be careful. And we can make great application to all these things. Herod went insane after he killed his wife. As I was researching this a little bit, he, uh, he would go through it. Now he had multiple wives and, uh, and concubines as well, as many of those, uh, those kings that were all about themselves, that's, they would do that. And he would go through the, his family, his, his wives, his concubines, and he'd, call out, he'd scream at him, going, you're not Miriam, you're not Miriam. And he, he went insane because he killed his wife. He had her, had, her, had her killed. He went so insane that he saw a woman at one point that reminded him of his wife and he, see, he took her, he seized her and he, he didn't even care who she was. She was a common harlot of the day and he took her and he, he was struck with a terrible, terrible disease that plagued him for the rest of his life. Now, it was so bad that near the end of his life he got, he, he was a bald, fat, oddly shaped man. What I mean by that is I mean his legs, his, I was reading something that his, his ankles were so wide. You ever hear somebody talk about smokestack legs where you're, the top of your leg and the bottom of your leg is the same width? But he was, it, was a, it was unbelievably uh, odd. And because of the disease, he stank something terrible. So bad that the guards that, that were around him would need to change out often so they could just withstand his presence. That's how, that's how gross he was. It was just awful. I mean, sin will bring you down. And that's exactly what happened to Herod the Great. He thought he was all that. And he basically um, told everybody, or his actions drove everybody away and everybody hated him. So much so that when and near the end of his life, he knew he was, he knew he was dying and uh, he knew nobody would mourn his death. And so what he did was he, he, he arrested a bunch of prime Jewish people of his land and he had them locked up and he told his sister and his brother-in-law that the day that I die, would you put all these people to death so that my death will be associated with great mourning in Israel. Isn't that awful? That's pride, arrogancy, and, and someone that's all about themselves. Here a fake king is doing all that. He was not a great guy. He was not a great guy whatsoever. Awful, awful, gruesome and brutal. No wonder he was troubled. Look at verse 3. It said, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. It's all about him. It's all about him. Now, we've already read some of this. Let's pick up in verse 7, please. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me wor word again, excuse me, that I may come and worship him also. Yeah, right. Knowing this man, we understand that he's lying. Okay, we all know that. The wise men didn't understand this, okay? Now, real quick, let's talk about the wise men for a minute. Why in the world were the wise men in Jerusalem? They came looking for the king. That's exactly right. Now, they saw the star where? The Bible says in the east. I should be pointing that way. In the east, right? They saw the star in the east. They saw, they saw the star back in their home in the east. And they came of their own mind said, well, if we're going looking for a king, we should go to the capital city. We should go to Jerusalem. Now, notice this. Look at the next text here. Verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. We have sometimes in our minds that the wise men followed the star all the way from the east to Jerusalem. They did not. They saw the star in the east, and they went looking for the king in Jerusalem, and when they stopped reasoning in their own thoughts and what they thought was best, and they looked back to the word of God that said, Bethlehem's where he's to be born. That's when the star reappeared. Let's make application there for a minute. Listen, when we follow the word of God and in faith we take steps to follow the Lord, amen, 
what that means is we get saved, and in faith we say, okay, God wants me to be baptized, so I'm going to go in the waters of baptism. Now I get baptized, and God wants me to join a church, so I join the church. Well, okay, God wants me to be active and serve him and wants me to, to there's a reason why I'm still on earth, so I'm going to serve him. And we start working in faith according to the word of God. We start seeing with the, whole, the direction of the Holy Spirit, he starts leading us. He starts showing us what we want to do. I've told you this so many times, but when you're down here and you say, what's God's will for my life? You're not going to know what's on the top step until you do what's right in front of you and you say, this is God's will for my life. I know because the Bible told me so. And I'm going to do f- what God told me to do and I'm going to be faithful in that and then he'll show us the next step. And the Holy Spirit directs us, this is what I want you to do. Amen. Amen. I didn't know down here when I surrendered to give God my life in Bible college my freshman year. I said, God, I'll serve you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Uh, that's, I know you want to use me. I didn't know he was going to have me pastor Shenandoah Bible Baptist Church. I didn't know that one bit. I didn't even know he was going to have me uh, marry Marie. I didn't know that. Where are you at? Somewhere. She's over here. There she is. She, cha- she swaps the eyes and all that. Okay. But I did know that God wanted me to serve him. And then he showed me Marie, and I got married. And then he showed me he wanted me to go to Michigan. And then he showed me that, that I was supposed to stay there and serve God and be faithful there. And then eventually he would lead me on. Now, praise God, I'm up here. I, I believe this is what God intended for me, and I'm excited about it. And I'm serving God here as your pastor, and I appreciate that. But listen, the wise men, they saw the star in the east, and they just assumed, hey, I've got to go to Jerusalem. When they, when they were thinking of their own assumptions, they went to the wrong place, and they alerted Herod. The reason that Herod found out about Christ is because the wise men. Now, when they looked to the word of God and, and, and understood that and followed in faith where they were supposed to go according to the word of God, that's when the star appeared again and led them right to the Savior. Now, I've always, it boggled my mind a little bit. Why didn't they, the star, why didn't they follow it all the way to where they're supposed to go in the first place? And I believe it has to do something with us and just doing what we assume instead of acting in faith according to the word of God. And, and when, they, when they left their reasoning and went back to what the Bible said, that's when God showed them what was right. Amen. Amen. And I think there's great application for all of us there. Don't get away from this book and act in faith according to what the word of God says. The Bible says, be a light in a dark world. So you know what we need to do? We need to put some tracks in our pocket. Say, Lord, I don't, I don't know all what to say and I don't know how to say it, but make me a light this week. Amen. And in faith, we start giving out the word of God and we start witnessing and wouldn't you know it, one of these days will be a brother Damien. Amen. Winning souls to Christ. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. And uh, so many soul winners in the church today, and I understand that. Now, let's continue here. Verse 11, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Let's stop there for a moment. I know it's not Christmas time. Why are you doing a Christmas, all this? Because I'm just going through Matthew right now, and this is what God wants. Now listen here. It is so easy for us to get distracted when we're doing what's right. Notice here the wise men came in, and I underlined this in my Bible because God pointed it out to me. When they came into the house where they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped who? Him. They didn't worship Mary. Amen. Amen. They didn't worship Mary. Look at the text keeps going. Look what it says. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto who? Yeah. Him. We're talking about the babe. He's, uh, he's maybe uh, a year old. He could have been, he's, he's two or younger because that's what they told uh, when, when Herod would go kill the babies. He killed two and under. Somewhere within that range. They presented their gifts to him. You say, why are you preaching about this? Because it's easy for us to get distracted when we're doing what's right. It's easy for us through the years. How many people have you met 
They call themselves Christians that worship Mary. Now, she was a great woman, and Elizabeth said she was blessed of women, uh, of the women of the earth. But she never said she was God. And there's a lot of people that are going to hell because they have trusted in some in Mary. She was sinful like the rest of us. She was born into sin because she had earthly parents. But Matthew chapter 1 teaches us that the incarnation of Christ and all those words that we looked at last time, that it pointed to the fact that it, Jesus did not come of, of Mary and Joseph. It came of Mary who was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not the bloodline of sinful man. And she was a virgin when she conceived of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we know that. And so they didn't come in worshiping Mary. Friends, I say this often. Let me say it again. Don't worship the preacher. Amen. Serve God and worship him. Amen. If you worship me, then you'll put me on some pedestal that all of a sudden I can do no wrong. And that is sin in itself, especially when, if I would allow that. Amen? If you worship some chairman of the deacons, Brother Shank, we love you, but we ought not to worship you. Amen? But if we do that, then we put man in the wrong place, and whatever he says, can, can, even if it's wrong, we're going to say, okay, let's do it. And even if it's opinion, okay, let's do it. And it can get us off base. Amen. Be careful of that thing. They didn't worship Mary. They didn't, they didn't worship a cause. They didn't worship a cause. Listen here, church. You know that I'm old-fashioned and I believe in soul winning. I believe in being separated. I believe in being an independent, fundamental Baptist preacher. I believe in that. But don't worship some portion of that and lose your family. Amen. What I'm saying is I have met people that are so sold out to soul winning that they lose their family because they're not, they don't spend any time with their family. I've met people like that. And God told me that I'm supposed to wear the hat of a father and a husband as well as be a soul winner and a pastor. And there are pastors that lose their family because they're so focused on the ministry and the name of the ministry and they let their families go wayside. Amen. You with me now? It's easy to get distracted in doing what's right. Don't let that happen. You worship Jesus, not some person, not some other thing. Amen. I'm, I'm pretty strong on this thing because I've seen it. And church family, I'm sure many of you have seen it. Don't, let's not get off track on this thing, please. We'll continue right along, please, tonight. We uh, left off in ver verse 12, please. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, it might have been worth their while financially to go back to Herod. He might have paid them off. He might have given them rewards, but they didn't do it. They followed God instead. Verse 13, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth in, un, into Joseph to, in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. He's quoting Hosea chapter 11, verse 1 right there. And uh, again, Satan trying to eliminate the Messiah. He's tried several times throughout the scriptures. You remember in Esther? Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews across all the kingdom. And that was an attempt of Satan to destroy Israel completely before the Messiah came. Didn't work. God preserved his people. And now here, he's trying to destroy the Messiah by eliminating all, uh, um, all the babies. And we're going we're gonna to get to that in just a second. And, uh, and God tells Joseph, take your family and go, go to Egypt. And you hide there and you wait there for his, for his death. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. 
and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being one of those soldiers? I cannot fathom that. You come in and you rip a little child out of a mother's arms that's screaming and, and begging you not to do that. And because the king ordered you to slaughter a baby. I mean, we're talking about infants. We're talking about two-year-olds. I cannot fathom that. How many men died trying to defend their families right there because of a selfish tyrant of a king that was fake to begin with and was trying to make his way be? I just can't fathom that. Verse 17, Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, Lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weepeth for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Now let me stop there just for a quick moment. Rama is a town north of Jerusalem about five miles. And in Rama, do you remember when Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem and he besieged it and then he destroyed it? He used, must have used Rama as a, a location device as he's destroying the city and as he's about to deport people, he must have taken them five, to five miles north and put them in Ramah. Because I found out that Jeremiah was bound. Remember Jeremiah was in prison at the time? And he took him to Ramah and there Jeremiah was released in Ramah. And he's watching his people be taken off into captivity. And the Bible says that in Ramah is where he lamented over his people there as they were leaving. And so here this verse is quoting out of Jeremiah and, and first of all used in Jeremiah's day and secondly used in the days of Christ here with these babies being slaughtered. Again, Rama is a town in Benjamin, the tribe of ben Benjamin, and Benjamin's mama was Rachel who died in childbirth. And uh, so there's a great lament here, a, a sorrow here. Let's finish it out. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Herod, you gotta, you got to picture this. Herod the Great, by him dying, that changed so much in Israel. Consider that tyrant being removed from the throne. His kingdom was broke up into three by, by three descendants, and, uh, and there would not, he would not have all the power that Herod the Great had. And people were glad of it. They were glad he was gone. And so Joseph finds out in Egypt that he's supposed to, to arise. Look at verse 20. Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archale Arch, Arch uh, however you pronounce the name, did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Remember, that's where he was. Joseph was from that originally. Remember when he was told to go because of the tax collector, the taxing time, he was supposed to go down to his city of birth, and that was Bethlehem, where he was from. Verse 23, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, there's so much application we can make from this chapter. First of all, the wrong king. There's the true king and the, and the false king. Consider your life. Is there any gods in your life that would take the preeminence away from Jesus Christ? I, I challenge you to ask the Lord that. Because even in my life as your pastor, there are things that can take my attention, my worship, my, uh, well, a lot of things can take it away from Jesus Christ. Are there gods in our life that are stealing the attention and, the, and the, uh, my money, stealing my money, stealing my attention, stealing my efforts, stealing my family away from Jesus Christ? Let's serve the right king. Let's adore the true king. Amen? Again, don't get distracted 
even while you're in his presence, while you're serving Jesus. Don't get distracted by little things. Let's serve him and not things. Amen. Amen. Serve him, not things. And lastly, I think about Herod, and I think about his wretched life. And all that he was and what he was brought down to, uh, he died alone, a wretched stench of a man, disgusting with disease. And I think about how sin brings death. What's the Bible say? Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen, church. Whether we're a man in here or a lady in here, whether we're an adult or we're a child, this applies to all of us. Let us not allow sin that we're going to be sorrowful about the consequences. Think before you act. Don't sacrifice. We say this a lot of times to young people. Our brother Kidwell has probably said this to young people. And if not, I'm saying it now. Don't sacrifice what you want the most for what you want at the moment. You with me now, church? Don't sacrifice what you want the most for what you want at the moment. You could say it another way. Don't sacrifice something that you long for on the altar of the immediate. How many young people have given up their purity on a moment right here when they long to have a family and a beautiful marriage and desire to have kids and grandkids and all of this? Some of these ladies, they dream about their wedding for, for years and years and then they give up something on the altar of the immediate. Don't do that. Men, you do the same thing. Sometimes a little this and a little this and some other things and a little bit of money and a little bit of other things and we can ruin our lives with sin. And Herod is a picture of that. Here this man, Herod the Great, died as a terrible wretch that nobody liked. And he had to fake the mourners at his death. Now, they didn't actually, they weren't actually put to death. His sister let him go. So nobody mourned his death. Praise God for that. Amen. Church family, Matthew chapter 2. Let's adore the true king. Let's serve Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, thank you for this scripture tonight. Thank you for teaching us through the book of Matthew. And I pray God tonight, Lord, you would convict us and show us where we need to do business with you. Lord, maybe there's some, there's some people in here tonight that, Lord, we just need to get back to it and say, I need to serve Jesus and quit serving some, some person. I need to serve Jesus and quit serving some thing. I need, to, I need to put this sin away, maybe. Lord, maybe you're convicting about that. I need to put this thing away so that, God, I don't ruin my life and ruin my, my wife's life and my children's lives. I need to put this sin away from me and give it up. Lord, maybe, maybe there's some other folks in here that you're pointing out some things tonight with the Word of God. Thank you for preaching your Scripture tonight. And God, I just ask you, Lord, now this invitation time that we would do business with you, please. The piano will play. The altar is open. I wonder, church family, if you'd stand with me tonight. It's already being used, and I wonder if you would join tonight. What do you need to talk to the Lord about tonight? So much application out of this great Scripture the Lord has given us. What do we need to deal with tonight? Maybe some of this, what God brought out of this scripture tonight, maybe you've already dealt with it. And maybe we just need to come and say, Lord, forgive me and help me to move past this sin and do right from this day forward. That's okay. This morning we preached about getting up. Don't stay down. Get back up and do right. Amen. Lord, be glorified in this invitation time. Work your perfect work and help us, Lord, to have genuine hearts before you tonight. That, God, we'd, we'd confess sin. We'd yield and say yes to you, Lord, where you want us to, maybe in serving you, maybe in giving up something, maybe in starting something, Lord. Whatever it might be, would you show us and would we be faithful to you, Lord? Thank you again for preaching your scripture tonight. And we ask your blessing, Lord, as we continue this invitation.
Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Moms and dads, let me just say this real quick. I love to see the little children at the altar. I think that's a precious, precious thing. And there are so many children, especially on Sunday nights. And you know what? Sometimes they don't even know why they're using the altar, but they're watching moms and dads. They're watching other adults, and they're learning. And that's a wonderful thing. I remember the night I got saved, I came to the altar, and I didn't even know why. I didn't know what I was doing. And somebody came up and, and started witnessing to me. Praise God for that. Amen. Sometimes we, well, we just need to go put an arm around them and help them because they don't know what they're doing sometimes. And sometimes they do. Praise the Lord for it. God, tonight we ask you to be glorified, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your work that you've accomplished today. Thank you for Shenandoah Bible Baptist Church, Lord, and how you've used us throughout the entire ministry. How many children were preached to today in junior church and in Sunday schools and, and, and the deaf ministry and the Spanish ministry and the nurseries. Lord, how many folks were serving you in different capacities today? Lord, even those keeping us safe and keeping a watchful eye on security tonight and, and throughout the day today. Lord, the, the widow banquet and widow's banquet and all of that, Lord. Thank you for what you've done, the, salva the souls being saved today. And God, as we close this invitation, we just thank you again for your word and preaching it to us, Lord. And, and thank you for making great application on some of these things. And Lord, help us to give up sin so we don't have a life and an and end like Herod, full of wretched consequences in our fleshly body because of sin we should have never been a part of. Lord, may we worship you as the true king and not run after and chase after other things. And God, we give you thanks for, for these applications. We ask your blessing now as we conclude tonight in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, church family. I love you. And I'm going to ask you to be seated just for a moment. Brother Jones is going to give us a couple announcements. And uh, just a reminder that that Medicare 101 that was supposed to be in tomorrow night, that has been postponed, and I'll, I will have to get back to you on a date at another time on that. And so, Brother Jones, close us in prayer, please. And it's dark out. It's been raining. Security, I don't know if they open the, the, the uh, playground, but we're not going to use it because it's dark and it's raining. Amen. And so, Brother Larry Harrison is already in the back, and he's got his books out there. Go visit him, please, and look at what he's got. Thank you. 6 p.m. Tuesday, soul winning here in the lobby, and then 7 p.m. Wednesday night, Bible study with Next Up and Patch and Pee Wee, and then 10 a.m. Ladies Soul winning on Thursdays, and then remember Friday night's Bridge to Recovery uh, has started, and uh, come on out and enjoy that. And then the next All Workers meeting will be Wednesday, October the 4th at 6.15 in B400. There are just a few Christmas gifts left to be purchased. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Shenandoah, for your zeal to be a blessing to missionaries. If you haven't picked up a blessing promise card yet, you may do so at the Welcome Center. Hurry before they are all gone. And then the John and Romans Bible Assembly Project for Africa is Saturday, September the 30th, beginning at 8 a.m. Please go to the events page on the church website or visit the Welcome Center kiosk to sign up for one or more of the two-hour time slots. Refreshments will be provided along with lunch. And then Martinsburg Christian Academy is hosting a Harvest Festival on October 6th from 5 to 9 p.m. We are needing volunteers to host Carnival Booth, so please sign up at the Welcome Desk. A couple of you have done so already. We are needing quite a bit. Uh, we're trying to have close to 30 uh, booths for the evening, so please help us with signing up. You get free entry if you uh, help us out with one of those booths. And then we are also needing bags of candy, 20-ounce soda bottles, and small toy prizes. You can drop those off at the school office, the lobby, or see myself or Mrs. Conaway. And then the Young at Heart Fall Activity. If you or your spouse are 55 years or older, our fall trip this year is going to be a scenic train ride on the Potomac Scenic Railroad, October 14 at 7 a.m. Deposit is due uh, to the railroad, so please sign up ASAP. Sign up today and buy your ticket by no later than September 24th. Cost for 55 to 59 year olds is $65. 60 year olds uh, and older is $60. See Mrs. Holly Stanley for more information. This Saturday is Brett Milburn and Kayla Price's wedding at 3 p.m. So please make your way here for that. And then Patch and Pee Wee are headed to Orr's Pumpkin Patch October 7th. Permission slips and payments are due by Wednesday. And I'm assuming this is October the 2nd. Is that correct? Okay. 
She's saying yes and no at the same time. So, all right, we'll assume October 2nd. And then there are pictures in the foyer from the 50s birthday bash. Please pick up your pictures today and only the ones that you're pictured in. Would you stand with me, please? We'll pray and then be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for the wonderful truths from your word in Matthew chapter 2. And help us to uh, make those applications in our lives. Help us to have the gospel in our lips this week. Help us to take tracts before we leave tonight and pass those out to everyone we can. Bring us back safely for Wednesday. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. to fly straight to light above. God gives wings, God gives wings as he goes. When my fears begin to stumble and my dreams greatness of my king my lord emmanuel his power is great and far exceeds what mortal tongue can tell my heart is full i sing for him and trust that i may serve him well well done thou good and faithful servant our words i long to hear